So we'll uh, continue uh, talking about uh, two-dimensional kinematics, two-dimension motion. Um, motion in two dimensions is probably sometimes maybe easier to see with that slow-mo and as you can kind of see with the stop-motion camera taking uh, pictures very quickly and keeping them there allows us to kind of see things and this is where we really kind of get into the why do we need to worry about motion in two dimensions well most of our uh, life and most of the world actually moves in a two-dimensional uh, as a projectile is happening as in some of the questions that were given yesterday um, you know what happens and that's usually a big misconception that the object that is being dropped is going to um, hit the ground last or get hit the ground first as opposed to uh, the bullet being shot and the bullet being dropped hitting at the same time um, that's a big misconception um, usually for students and so projectiles happen um, no matter how fast you're hitting it, it is going, if it is on earth, it is going to drop. Now you can change the shape uh, of an object and, and you will utilize Bernoulli's principle. That's how flight actually happens. It's the shape of the uh, wing that uh, has a difference in pressure. But if you are going to project something through the air it is going to start dropping um, I usually in the classroom like to throw an object or two at uh, students to catch it and regardless of where it is it's going to start dropping um, if you are shooting a gun you have to account for the drop of the bullet um, if you are shooting an arrow in, uh, at, a, at a target, uh, you have to account for the drop in the arrow. Now, the closer you are, the less you have to account for it, but it's still going to happen. And those are things and that we have to make sure that we understand. That it is going to drop, and it always drops according to gravity. So we have that parabolic equation that some people are like, great. And as we can see, even in like the welding sparks coming off, they are launched up and out. But I think it's what I think is almost beautiful, beautiful and elegant is the fact that you can see these parabolic paths for those sparks coming off. Uh, you can see the parabolic nature of the uh, path of the sparklers or the path of uh, in uh, the fireworks display um, utilizing the function uh, that water will have in the fountain as well um, those I think it's it kind of shows a certain amount of elegance uh, to it and uh, that we have these things that are happening and they just when you kind of look at them and I think these why you know slow motion cameras or kind of getting these uh, cameras with that will allow for you those sparks to be caught and that parabolic pathway to be seen I think is in a way something quite elegant um, and beautiful in a way so projectile motion like most any other uh, all any and all two-dimensional motion we are going to treat it as a horizontal and vertical motion separately um, and that's going to help us out uh, it's not going to allow for the engineering it up so to speak uh, we're not going to deal with uh, the one thing that's going to bother a lot of people that have to actually end up being engineers and that's air resistance uh, there is no such thing as air resistance uh, in this class. 
Uh, we have perfect in, in, in friction. We don't have to worry about those things um, because it's in, we don't need to worry about it. You're really going to engineer things up real fast by trying to account for everything. Um, that's why engineers get paid the way they do sometimes because in some definitely some engineers get paid the way they do sometimes um, because of that ability to look at any and all situations this is why you know some engineering isn't actually what you think is more tinkering sometimes it's just computer modeling um, to do things to see whether or not things would even work um, I think it's important that we understand the physics and the science without those things uh, coming into play. And so it might bother, like, well, wouldn't wind take an, have an effect on the projectile uh, flying through the air? Yes, it would. But you know what? We're not going to deal with that. Um, we're not going to take the wind into account when an object is tr driving down the road. Um, and we're going to also go under the impression that it's a perfectly, uh, you know, aer aeronautics is perfect. So these things are going to be kind of taken with a little bit of uh, understanding. Yes. Is there friction? you darn right there is. But until we start solving for it, we're not going to worry about it. That's a unit 3.5 thing. And so when it comes to the horizontal... This is where we're not going to take into air resistance, meaning that the velocity as it moves from left to right or right to left, depending on what it's doing, is not going to change. The only way the horizontal velocity changes is because of air resistance. Since we're taking that out of the equation, so to speak, all horizontal components once you find the horizontal velocity, that doesn't change until the object hits the ground. The vertical component of an object is just like any object falling. And so if we can take that into account, that works. Now, why can we do that? Well, if we take simple things and we look at an object as it's projected through the air, and I, you draw that function of that par the parabola if you look at it that's the pathway that it takes well really what's happening is that you have little arrows taking into effect which basically makes a triangle as you get through everything, and since the horizontal velocity doesn't change, and the only thing that's going to then change is the vertical component, because gravity does happen, gravity does affect it, does slow it down as it goes up, and then speeds it up as it goes down, that's where those arrows are getting longer, and that's why it follows that path. Now, when we start to do some of the examples for this stuff, we are going to try and separate it out, at least at the beginning, for just half of it. Kind of having objects roll off of a cliff or roll off of a table. as we can kind of see here what we see and what we get. So as we can see, the, the kind of the GIF here allows us to kind of see it moving and then as it moves with the arrows, and that's where kind of being able to as I kind of mentioned, uh, you know, see the matrix, so to speak, being able to kind of visualize those arrows 
happening on the object as it falls and as it goes from one place to another can be very helpful uh, being able to visualize those components to it. So a stone is launched horizontally at 15 meters per second from the top of a cliff that is 44 meters high. How far from the base does the stone hit the ground? How fast is it moving before it lands? And so when we look at how the how fast is it moving before it lands, you, uh, we have two options for that, but we're going to take the easier route at this point in time because we haven't actually given an angle. Um, you could find out the actually how fast it is moving if it more, was more specific. But we're going to look at the velocity in the y direction that it is and how far from the base would be our d sub x in that case. So I'm going to uh, resize and draw what's going on here so that we can visualize what's going what what's happening you know so we have our cliff we have an object that is launched horizontally that'd be the v sub x is equal to 15 meters per second We also know that the object, or the cliff, is 44 meters high, or in some cases, we'll look at it as the d sub y. And we're asked to again solve for how far from the base does it hit and how fast is it going when it hits. One of the other items that we can't forget about and that is again gravity is a negative 9.81 meters per second per second. Now a couple things that we have for us. We know that the velocity in the x direction is not going to change as it uh, flies through the air. Because again, we're, getting, we're not taking into account uh, wind resistance. So we're not worrying about that. So the velocity in the x direction isn't going to change because that is something to solve for the distance in the x direction we would need to use distance is equal to v sub x times time we don't have a time so we need to solve for time well how do we solve for time we do however have an equation that d sub y is equal to one half g t squared. That would allow us to actually solve for time. So let's use that as our starting point and begin our adventure. So let's have a 44 meters. Is equal to one half. Now 
9.81 times t squared. 9.81 divided by 2 or times 1 half gives us the 4.905 equal that to 44 meters that is still technically meters per second per second times t squared, technically also there. We then can use just regular algebra divide both sides by negative 4.905 So 44 divided by 4.905 gives us 8.9, technically negative. But one of the things that we have going for us here is can time be negative? Well, no. And we can actually look at the 44 and actually say that it, because it's going down, it could also be viewed as a negative 44, which would then allow us to say that it was 4 point, I'm sorry, 8.97 is a positive because of the directional component that we are utilizing. Now, we then need to square, take the square root of both sides. To give us a time of 2.99 seconds or roughly three seconds. Now, with that, we can take our three seconds, put it into the d sub x is equal to v sub x times t, So 3 times 15 would be, I believe, 45. And it is also now asking us how fast is it going at the very bottom. We have, again, we can utilize um, we even if we were asked to solve for the velocity at the angle that it was going to hit at, we would still need to find the velocity right before it hit uh, in the y direction. So we would still need to solve for the velocity here in the y direction even if it were at an angle. The velocity in the y direction or the final velocity in the y direction we see in the equation of v sub f is equal to g times t. 
that will allow us again to use this and again a negative 9.81 times 3 because that's how long it was falling gives us a velocity in the y direction of a negative 29.43 meters per second. Now we could then utilize that if we needed to, to solve for the other components utilizing uh, trigonometry. Uh, you can use uh, the uh, par par uh, par par uh, oh my goodness, the na words just don't come out. Uh, Pythagorean theorem uh, to solve for using uh, c squared is equal to a squared plus, uh, time, uh, times uh, plus b squared. And so you should be able to then solve for that other angle if, if you were asked to. In this case, we weren't going to go there.